Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan Latham with Fort Worth Opera, and I'm so excited and honored to be here with the magnificent Janae Bridges, internationally renowned mezzo-soprano, and one of the stars of the Mets production of Philip Glass's Akhenaten, part of our Moonlight Film Fest with the Metropolitan Opera at Coyote Drive-In. Hi, Janae, how are you doing today? Hi, Ryan, I am well, staying warm in New York with 12 inches of snow. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Yes. Fun, fun, fun. Um, thank you so much for being with me here today on Zoom, the place where we seem to live indefinitely for hours on end as of late. So thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. You betcha. Well, first off, congratulations on making your Metropolitan Opera debut. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I feel honestly, you know, it was, it's over a year now that I made my debut, but I feel feel still on a high from that moment. I can remember every single <laughs> moment that took place. And um, yeah, it, it was an incredible experience. I bet it was. In, in 2019, as you prepared for the role of Nefertiti, could you tell us about your connection to this revolutionary Egyptian queen and some of your most fond memories of bringing her to life during the rehearsal and throughout the full run? Mm. So, Growing up um, in Seattle, Washington, uh, there weren't a lot of images that depicted like black women in kind of like queenly um, <laughs> positions. So my parents and specifically my mother made it a point to have um, different African royal images in my household. So I grew up with, you know, images of King Tut and and uh, little sculptures of Cleopatra and Nefertiti. So for me, like the Egyptian royal um, world has always been in my life. And when I got the call to to sing Queen Nefertiti um, at LA Opera, actually, that was a dream come true. And then when the Met said, "We want you." you know, to be a part of, of, of the same production. I just thought, oh my gosh, like I never in a million years thought that, first of all, I'd be making my Met debut um, with this repertoire, but especially in this role. So, you know, it was just a huge honor for me to kind of step onto one of the world's most amazing um, stages into this role in which I felt so connected to already um, and I and I in a way felt like I embodied her because I'd just grown up with this idea of of being an African queen <laughs> so it was very easy for me to just like tap into that and and create the role um, with myself in it and and just thinking of amazing queens in my life um, and when I stepped backstage for the first day of rehearsal, I was very emotional for many reasons. It was just like a moment that I'd been dreaming of for so long, but also it was the same day that Jesse Norman passed away. And I stepped backstage inside the backstage door and I looked at my phone and I had a million texts saying, uh, Miss Norman is gone. And I just thought, oh my gosh. And I immediately started crying because of obvious reasons, but also I felt in a way that she was saying job well done and, and kind of passing the torch. It was a very surreal moment. So, you know, that first day of my very first rehearsal at the Met, um, all of that happened and I just felt this is very special, you know, and it's a moment that I will never forget. And it kind of invigorated me and um, equipped me to like, give my all, you know? Yeah. So that was very, very, very um, memorable. And the whole process, I mean, Anthony Roth Costanzo, he's a good friend of mine who played the title role of Akhenaten. We went to Manhattan School of Music together. So we go way back. And the fact that, you know, I was making my Met debut with him in the title role, it just felt right. And it felt like at home and you know, the level of excitement from the whole cast, the creative team, 
was so inspiring. It was just like, we are here to tell this story, but we're not here to tell you actually what to think or how to feel. We are going to, um, you know, put on this incredible show with juggling and the costumes and, and the gold leaf. I mean, they painted me with gold leaf every night. I was like, oh, I can get used to this. Um, but it was really special because we weren't, we weren't telling you what to feel or, or the audience what to feel or what to even think. It was like, just come into this journey with us and let the music, um, let the music take over, you know, and the production and just meditate in it with us. So it was a very special um, production and, you know, sometimes by the end of shows, it's like, okay, are we almost done? <laughs> <laughs> right. This one was like, we're done. Oh my gosh. How is it over already? Like, and it was just such a, a very um, monumental moment for, for me and my career, because I, you know, I just felt like the timing was right. I felt that um, the audience received it very well and it left them wanting more, which is for me, the greatest, I mean, like, this is why we do what we do, right? It's <laughs> so, yeah, a very special experience. And I, I hope to, to sing the role again. As an artist, you will not and you cannot be boxed in, which is absolutely inspiring. Mm. So, kudos to that. Thank uh, you. Throughout your career, you've been equally at home in the shoes of Delilah and Bercy and Carmen, and uh, as much as you are in modern works uh, like Sister Helen in Dead Men Walking or mm -hmm. Custer Bay in Satyar Graha. Amazing. Yeah. You're amazing in that. Um, what, what has been your favorite role thus far and what operatic character are you dying to sink your teeth into as you? Wow. Oh, this is a hard one. <laughs> So many great roles that I've done. Um, I, I think I'll have to name two. Okay. So Carmen is a role that I've actually lived with since undergrad. Slowly, you know, learning the arias and moving to the ensembles and then the scenes and the finale. Um, so it is a part of me, <laughs> you know? It's one of those roles that I feel like if someone called tomorrow, like I could just do it. Um, but I really love singing the role of Carmen because not only does it fit my voice mm -hmm. well, you know, the tessitura and the range and uh, the drama of it, but I really feel her. I kind of identify with her <laughs> and people are like, what? You identify with Carmen? Are you a man eater? And I was just like, no, it's, it's not that at all. I identify with her sense of freedom yeah. in liberty. Um, and so, you know, I think she has a tendency to be very misunderstood, but whenever I go into the role, I, I find new things. I'm just like, oh, wow, this is why she did this. And I mean, she is quite unpredictable, mm -hmm. but I try to make her as, as, as accessible and human as possible because you know, in all of opera, like we have these characters that may sometimes seem just ridiculous, but they're there because humans are are dynamic and interesting and and confusing and and all the things. So I love playing her role because every time I, I do it, I just find something to to dive deeper in and really like expand upon. Mm -hmm. But I also just have so much fun. I have so much fun in the last like the very the last production I did was at San Francisco Opera and um, I was running around that stage like crazy. And I thought, how am I gonna, how am I gonna sing this? But you do it, you know, yeah. you get it in your body and it's like anything, you just practice and, and, and repeat and it's just so fun. So um, that would be a favorite. And also um, different, a different end of the spectrum would be Sister Helen from Dead Man Walking. Um, I never thought that I would sing the role actually, just because it's based off of a, a, a living, a live woman, a historical figure. And um, I thought, oh, they'll probably never cast me because I'm a black woman 
and she like a younger woman and she's um well at the time she was younger as well but a white woman so i thought uh i'll never be cast in this just because she's still alive you know um and it's based on a true story but i was and i thought oh my gosh this is super exciting and cool and it's a story that it doesn't matter what you look like anyone can can um relay this beautiful story so i really had fun doing that because i first of all i learned so much about the system you know yeah. and um about death row. I really didn't know much about it, but it gave me a lot of insight and a lot of empathy, actually. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a heartbreaking, like I, I found myself in that experience um, and development of the character and role, like breaking down often because it was just like, I'm torn. <laughs> like I, Janae, am torn. Right. Um, so I can only imagine how Sister Helen felt, but then it brought her closer to God. It brought her closer to um, Joseph de Rocher, who was on uh, on death row. And now she, her mission is to abolish death row. And I was kind of like, at first when I went into it, I was just like, I don't know if people do bad things, they should be punished for it. Mm -hmm. And now I just have a completely different, um, perspective on it. So I always love singing roles that that change my mind and like make me dig deep. And that was one of them. So I just really appreciated that experience. And I also, I mean, it fits my voice very, very well. Um, so I hope to do it again. Yeah. I hope to see you in it. Thank you. <laughs> As you continue to to carve out your career and make a mark on this industry and beyond, what other opportunities or stylistic detours would you like to, to take <laughs> and embrace as a performer? Mm, that's a great question. Well, I grew up singing gospel and jazz and um, more contemporary music. So that is in me and it's kind of been neglected for many years just because I've been so focused and honed in on, on classical vocal repertoire, opera and concert and recital. And it truly is my passion. I love it so much. And honestly, I feel like my voice just fits classical music better. But um, I am very interested in cross genre collaboration. And I honestly feel we need that. The world needs it. The opera world needs it. Definitely. Um, and as American artists, I feel like most of us have different voices, you know? Um, so I'm really interested in just like delving into all of my, my, my gifts and, and voices and seeing how I can um, use them in concert repertoire and even just co cross genre collaborating with jazz musicians, uh, maybe even some mainstream musicians, um, and seeing where that takes me as well. You know, why not? Definitely. If there is one thing, one thing that you could say to a basketball loving opera singing Janae as a youth, oh. what, what advice would you give her today? Mm. Ooh. <laughs> I would probably say that you are enough and that your, your voice is enough. We already have a Maria Callas. We already have a Paparotti. We already have a Denise Graves. Janae Bridges has her own um, story to tell. So be confident and assured that someone is going to want to hear that and be interested in that. Um, because in the beginning, I mean, like as a young singer, I feel at least for me, I was often listening to recordings and watching different singers for the purposes of um, just like 
better understanding what I was getting into and what was out there and, and who I wanted to be like and what I didn't want to be like. Um, and it was all very helpful, but I did at times make the mistake of, of trying to be something that I wasn't. So, you know, I would say all that research and stuff is great and it's even necessary, um, but take all that away and ask, who are you? What do you have to say? And what is your story? Tell it because it is interesting and it's enough. So that's what I would say. Janae, it was such a gift to speak with you today. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. It's so lovely to meet you too. I you? hope to actually do so in person one day instead of this virtual thing that we're on. I but know, absolutely. Well, I would love to come to Fort Worth and, you know. We would love you. to have you. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you. All you Texas opera lovers out there, don't miss your chance to see the incredible Janae Bridges as Nefertiti in Akhenaten on February 4th, this Thursday at 7 p.m. at the Coyote Drive-In. Visit fwopera.org to get your Moonlight Film Fest tickets today. Thanks again, Janae. Thank you. Bye.